Crypto has crashed two or three times already this year. The stock market has crashed twice. The US have increased interest rates and the UK and Europe are likely to follow suit. So all eyes are on real estate and will real estate be the next to crash? A lot of people are predicting a property crash. Logic and history would suggest that real estate is next to crash. Generally speaking, real estate follows about six to nine months after a stock market crash, as well as when you increase interest rates by 1%. Generally, the trend throughout history is that property values will fall by about 10%. That's what history tells us, but can we trust that now? Will the housing market react? Will it crash? Will it react the same way it has over the last 100 years and follow suit with the stock market? Will this time be different? History also shows us that the housing market doesn't always crash when there's a recession. There are two main reasons why the housing market doesn't always crash in a recession. First off, it's in liquid and slow to react. Secondly, people need somewhere to live, unlike Bitcoin or shares, people can liquidate those very quickly if they feel the market is turning. Taking into account the other market crashes that we've had in terms of the stock market and crypto, the odds should be in favor that the housing market will fall dramatically within the next nine months. But there are a number of good reasons why I just can't put a housing crash into favor right now. Lots of people will tell you, you cannot predict the housing market, but that goes against everything I learned in college and what I did in consultancy. Predictions are not always 100%, but they are a forecast. Like the weather, you're not gonna always get it right, but they are based on data and information that's available at the time. They won't always be right, but forecasts or predictions are important in terms of the market. In terms of property prices, there are generally four main economic factors that are used to forecast housing prices. One, GDP, inflation, interest rates, and employment. Some countries' GDP is slowing, like the US. There is concerns that the US will go into recession within the next few months. Parts of Europe are definitely slowing as well. But Ireland's GDP is a star performer and is the envy of most countries around the world. Granted, most people in Ireland do not benefit from a high GDP, and the majority of that GDP is made up by multinationals that are based in Ireland. But GDP uh, growth is a positive sign for housing growth in the future as well. So positive GDP generally points to increased housing prices. The next indicator is the much talked about interest rates or access to capital. If interest rates go up, generally demand comes down and therefore prices come down as well. The Fed increased interest rates by 0.75% this week, the highest increase on record for the last 28 years. However, the Fed's interest rates are still at a historically low level. Many are wondering, will the European Central Bank follow suit and raise interest rates? Inflation is a major concern for the European Central Bank. It is one of their mandates to manage inflation rates. So therefore, the likelihood of an interest rate hike in the next few months is very likely. However, I don't believe it's going to be as high as the Fed and is likely going to come in somewhere around 0.05. Overall, interest rates are still very low compared to historical rates. There is always the fear that the EU will increase interest rates over the next year or two. However, the EU have to be very cautious not to increase interest rates too dramatically because they will increase the borrowing costs for the countries within the EU. And this could be very detrimental to some countries, particularly Italy, which could drive them into insolvency. The EU have to balance all the country's needs, unlike the US and the Fed, where the Fed are thinking about the stock exchange and the country as a whole, and perhaps they can make decisions regardless of some poorer states. The EU won't act in the same manner, they'll try to protect each member state, and therefore I don't see huge interest rates hikes happening in the Eurozone over the next year or two. Granted, there will be some hikes, but I don't think they'll be huge. So as an indicator, interest rates are rising, meaning capital is getting more expensive, and this generally leads to house prices falling. The next indicator is inflation. Inflation was largely forgotten about for the last 20 years, mainly because of globalization keeping prices down. Over the last 20 years or so, countries and central banks have lost their ability to control inflation through mechanisms like interest rate hikes, and their ability has been weakened to control inflation but inflation is front of mind for everyone at the moment. And I believe there's a misconception of how inflation impacts property prices. A lot of people seem to think that high inflation will push down property prices. Well, the fact is that inflation will generally drive up asset value prices such as gold and real estate. 
It's the mechanisms that governments try to use and control inflation that actually can bring down property prices, not inflation itself, i.e. governments will try increase interest rates to try to control inflation. But inflation on its own drives up property prices as more and more people are sitting on cash and that cash is being eaten away by inflation and therefore they look for hard assets such as real estate or gold to put their cash into, driving demand even further and prices even higher. Central banks try to control this by increasing interest rates and hopefully driving down demand. However, inflation is running at six, seven, eight percent or more at the moment, and interest rate hikes are probably only going to be about one or two percent over the next year or two. There are also huge personal savings, so access to capital may not be an issue for a lot of people. There is enough cash in on deposits within Ireland to buy up all the supply of property that would come onto the market for the next 10 years without ever having to go to the bank or having to worry about interest rates. In Dublin, I'm hearing from a lot of agents that a lot of buyers are all cash buyers, particularly in wealthy areas. In New York, I'm hearing that interest rates are not having a big impact on affordability, particularly at the higher end of the market because people have large reserves and the interest rate hikes are not affecting their affordability just yet. However, there is definitely concern out there in both markets that interest rate hikes will have a bigger impact on lower value areas generally because buyers at the lower end of the market are more sensitive to interest rate hikes. Inflation will weaken demand a little bit because people will have less in their pocket, they'll have less to save or they'll have less to spend on their mortgage. But it's also important to realize that inflation impacts supply side as well and less will be supplied because construction costs are going up. There's more risk associated with taking on a development site because construction costs are continuing to rise and there's a lot of uncertainty there for a developer to start developing, which will impact supply. As interest rates are going up, this will also impact the cost of capital for developers and therefore will make it more costly to develop out sites because their borrowing costs are going up as well, which will ultimately hit uh, the supply side as well. The next major indicator is employment. Employment stats have an impact on demand levels. If employment is going up, generally people are more comfortable in their jobs and more willing to take on a mortgage. If um, unemployment figures are growing, then people get worried about their job and they're less likely to take on a mortgage and therefore that impacts demand. Employment stats around the world are generally quite high and some places are at full employment. That should indicate that demand for properties is quite strong. However, the stock market crash uh, there recently may indicate that there could be some layoffs down the line and that might worry some people in terms of taking on a huge mortgage, etc. and people may delay sit decisions. At the moment, employment numbers are tracking extremely well. That could change in the near future, but high employment generally means that house prices go up. Ireland is an open economy and global factors have a big impact on the Irish economy as well as the housing market. But I feel that there's a lot of stock placed on the US housing market as an indicator of what might happen to the Irish uh, housing market. After spending nearly the last two years uh, stateside, I'm not sure the US housing market is a great indicator for the Irish market. In the last recession, the US housing market didn't fall anywhere near as much as the Irish market and rose far quicker than the Irish market as well. The US housing market is so diverse, some states could be booming and others falling. Generally speaking, in the US, people move around far easier than they do in Europe in terms of chasing jobs. So therefore, some cities could be booming while others are failing. Hence, like New York could be doing extremely well right now. Florida could be doing extremely well, but LA and the rest of the country could be doing terrible. So therefore, you might have a situation in the US where you have falling house prices on a national level. However, you could have some states or some cities absolutely booming because a huge amount of people are moving there for job opportunities. When you look at the US housing market, really you should be considering it against the European housing market because Ireland is just too small to compare it to the US market. Really, you need to look at the US as an entirety versus the entirety of Europe i.e. prices could be going up in Dublin and Ireland and Portugal, but prices could be crashing in Italy. The same needs to be considered when you're looking at the US market. Prices overall could be coming down, but as I said, they could be going up in areas like Florida or New York. While looking at the US housing market can be helpful in terms of an indicator, I do not think a huge amount of stock should be placed on it 
uh, when you're looking at Ireland. Ireland is too small of an area when you're comparing it to a country like the size of America. As I mentioned, there are four economic factors to look at when you are trying to forecast or predict how housing prices might go in the future. There's also a good one to add in in terms of population trends and population growth. But also there's other uh, indicators that you can look at as well. Perhaps you can look at Irish shares that are um, directly linked to real estate within Ireland. As I mentioned, generally speaking, uh, the housing market lags behind the stock market by about six to nine months. So perhaps looking at some of the Irish share uh, or companies that are listed that are involved in real estate in the Irish real estate market is a helpful indicator. And one would be current homes, which are down about 11% over the last six months, but a large percentage of that fall came in the last week. Another company would be to look at IRES in terms of much publicized uh, Canadian based uh, owners, but it is an Irish listed REIT and it's largely made up of residential properties. That has fallen by 23% over the last six months and maybe 6% in the last five days. But I would say a large percentage of that reduction in share value could be because of the increased legislation around uh, landlords and their ability to uh, manage their properties. Glen Bay properties are down about 25% in the last six months. So Irish listed real estate companies shares have dropped uh, over the last six months, which could indicate that a housing price drop is on the horizon. Another indicator to consider is foreign investment into real estate. Between 2004 and 2011, there was no international funds investing in Ireland because they saw thought it was overpriced and they could see that there was a bubble there. There was next to no uh, international investment in Ireland during that period. However, if you look to see what's happening right now, there's new firms coming into Ireland all the time. There's new investment firms coming into Ireland all the time. Some French fir firms have bought their first uh, developments uh, over the last few weeks and demand for Irish property and Irish real estate from an international point of view is still extremely high which would indicate that perhaps a crash or a fall is not quite ready to happen just yet because a lot of the international markets see Ireland as extremely good value compared to other international cities. It's also important to look at the current trend in terms of how house prices have trended over the last year in Ireland and where they've been trending over the last few months. It has been reported nearly every month for the last six months that house prices are up about 15% on last year or the last 12 months, and that is the case. However, if you look at the percentages in detail month to month and what the percentage increases were per month, that increase or that level percentage increase is falling all the time and has been falling since August 2021. I created this graph to illustrate this. Price increases have been falling for the last eight months. The majority of price increases that happened in the last 12 months happened in the summer months of 2021. For a four month period, nearly 50% of that 15% growth that we're everyone is reporting about happened in four months last summer between June and September. With this in mind, as we move into the summer months and we see percentage increases being reported every month for the last 12 months, we're going to start seeing very some very significant drops in levels in terms of what the average annual increase has been as we enter into those summer months and get over those summer months the increases or the annual increase over 12 months will drop into single figures very quickly. So far in 2022, prices have only increased by 2.3% in the first four months of the year. Compared that to 2021, August alone nearly showed the same level of increase in one single month. So therefore, it is a clear signal that things are slowing down. In terms of the housing market bubble bursting, I don't believe we're actually in a real estate bubble at the moment in terms of how you define it from an economic point of view. There definitely was a crypto and stock market bubble, but the fundamentals for real estate, I think still stack up from an investment point of view or from a long-term point of view. And therefore a lot of markets will see that and a lot of investors are seeing that as well. If you want to know more why I don't think it's a bubble right now, I have made a video which I will link at the end. Also, please, while you're at it, uh, show your support to the channel. Uh, give this video a like and subscribe to the channel too.
There are a lot of factors that suggest that a price reduction in housing is around the corner. I believe that there will be a slight reduction or perhaps even a leveling off of housing over the next year or two, followed by further increases once confidence comes back to the market. I do not see a major crash happening mainly because of the lack of supply it is a major issue also interest rates are going up and but they're still at a historically low level the lack of housing being built over the last 10 years is not going to make up for uh, the increases in interest rates in terms of pushing off demand versus supply there is still a huge amount of cash out there on reserve and a lot of people are going to look for hard assets um, to put their cash into rather than it being eaten away by inflation in the bank as I said, inflation will increase construction costs. It also increases the risk of taking on a development and interest rates also going up will increase borrowing costs for developers, which will make it harder and harder to bring on new supply as well. So I believe the lack of supply will reduce the risk of a major crash happening within the property market. At the start of the year, I predicted that there'd be no price increase or any increase would be in the single low digits four months in in terms of reporting where figures are were 2.3 percent increase on the year further increases are likely going to be low and there might be one or two months of some negative growth so therefore i'm leaning still towards a very low growth rate for 2022. I generally put out these market update videos or prediction videos once every six months or so. But if you want a monthly update in terms of how I think the market is going, I do put out a monthly newsletter so you can sign up for that below. So generally speaking, I think housing prices are going to level out and there's going to be very low growth for 2022. I would have concerns for some locations, particularly where jobs and people are moving around or shifting. I feel some locations could be impacted far worse than others. But I also think the lack of confidence out there, concerns of a crash will definitely open up opportunities for some savvy investors or savvy buyers, but it will all depend on the location. Commercial buyers will use the uncertainty that's out there to try to drive down some of the prices and get better deals. I'm kind of glad that we'll hopefully start seeing some opportunities open up over the next few years and it will create for a more interesting market. If you want to stay in touch and in the loop with some of these opportunities, make sure you sign up below and subscribe to this channel. Also, comment below. Let me know what you think the market, what way the market will go in the future over the next year or so, even the US or Irish market. Let me know your thoughts below. Also, comment on this video, point out where I got it wrong or where I got it right or where you agree with me or disagree with me. And also, thanks for watching.